going on, guys? This is Mage. And this is Seti Sosa. And we'll be bringing you another game from Yaws' 2v2 tournament. We have uh, Junkers and Feta, two well-known free-for-all players in our uh, community, who there may be a little bit of bias showing through for us in rooting for them. And uh, then one of the top teams on the W3 2v2 ladder, it's uh, Nick Tamir and uh, Weak Undead. So we'll just call them Weak and uh, Tamir. How about that? <laughs> All right. So uh, we do see it's a undead and orc versus night elf and uh, orc. Um, so you play quite a bit more two v two than I do. When I was playing two v two, night elf and orc was pretty standard going for. Uh, well, in terms of kind of a early push strategy, torrent chieftain and headhunters combined with huntresses and priestess of the moon. Is that still viable at all these days? I don't think people play that anymore. They most That's of them play uh, they play Blade Master and uh, Demon Hunter or Keeper of the Grove uh, for harassment. Uh, that seems to be the the trend right now. And there's not a lot of massing strategies. Although I, I would say it could, could still be viable uh, against okay, races like a Knight of Undip if they mass or something. Um, but uh, on the pro level, I don't. I haven't seen it for a long time. And when I say pro level, I mean the the good solo players <laughs> that play right now. The people love above uh, mages level of two v two. Yeah, a bit above, maybe just a slight bit. Um, okay, so we do see Feta opening with Voodoo Lounge, but no um, barracks here. You actually probably have played two v two with them a decent bit. Uh, do you think Feta is going to go for just the quick tech to tier two and get Wyverns, or mm -hmm. is he going to hold off for some other type of strategy? We do see a War Mill going up, um, but it's going to be a Blade Master, so Headhunters would seem to be pretty unlikely here. Uh, do you think it's just going to be Towers and a tier two tech? Yeah, uh, they play the same kind of thing every time I've played against them, uh, which is also why I think uh, I won like almost every game uh, in two on two versus them. Um, they're very they play this. Uh, Feta is harassing, uh, and then he takes fast, and he plays a lot of towers. And uh, at some point, he's gonna think about what kind of unit combination he's gonna make, uh, whether it's Wyverns or it's Torrents or something like that. But uh, I think it's pretty weak opening because it just you it it prevents you from creeping yourself, and you're relying on your blade master to do damage. Um, and at the same time, uh, wyverns are not that great against another orc, so you can't really do, use wyverns in in these situations um, unless you somehow take really fast and and prevent the uh, tier two buildings from getting up. So uh, Junker will try to creep and. Uh, you know, carry the team, but yeah, I see them as as really uh, overmatched in this game. <clears throat> so I mean, that's all well and good. Um, do you think there's going to be any surprise advantage? Since perhaps I'm wrong, but um, I would think that uh, Tamir and uh, Weak don't face Feta and Junkers nearly as often as you do. Um, and we mm. do see that there has not actually been a scouting of Feta's base yet. So do you think there's any chance that they can just get completely caught off guard by Feta's strategy? I know it's not a unique strategy. However, perhaps it's not one that is expected at the top tier levels of 2v2. And there'll mm. be some surprise that they can go off of. Yeah, th that might be might be the case. Um, at some point, they're going to have to scout to see if he's uh, playing Wyverns and if he's playing Raiders or whatever. Because he might put off some shenanigans or something like that, um, but we'll have to see. Uh, I think the the problem is that you need at least four wounds or something like that to to really be able to uh, put on some serious damage, um, and it's going to take some time to get that. Uh, so they have to to buy time for that. Um, yeah, and unfortunately we see here Junker's really being hit hard by this harassment. He has started his tech to tier 2 now, um, but the combination of the Blade Master and the Keep of the Grove really did quite a bit of damage. Took down a bunch of ghouls, a couple of alkalites, and most importantly has completely prevented Junkers from getting any harassment done. And in fact, he may go down to this Keeper of the Grove right now that just pulls off an entangle on him. Not going to TP, not worth it. So there we go. We do see the Death Knight go down early on. 
And uh, we actually see Tamir going ahead, putting an early Tree of Life up there, so he'll be trying to get an expansion as quickly as possible. And then uh, Feta really not able to do very much in the terms of harassment damage. He has just gotten up to Tier 2, but there we go. We do see the scout coming in. Tamir going to go ahead and try and take down that barracks. Mm. Yeah, and that, that's the sort of mass hunt strategy that I was talking about that they usually play. Um, and uh, he's gonna just gonna stay for tier at tier one, Nick Tamir, and then the orc uh, weak under is gonna get yeah, the uh, the counter to whatever Feta is doing, I guess. Um, if he builds weapons, uh, you know, uh, he will play bats, or if he plays uh, raiders, then he can go uh, raiders, sh spirit walkers to counter that. So if they they do it right, they should be able to to get the advantage, I guess. Here we go. And yeah, Weak Under has crept the Goblin Shop right now, so he'll soon be level 3 and can put on some uh, pressure onto Junker, so he won't be able to creep, I guess. Yep, we do see that uh, Weak Undead about to finish his tech to tier 2. Um, Tamir, however, staying completely tier 1, and I would guess is going to do some feeding or perhaps just massing of. Uh, his huntresses ah, moving on to a few archers now as well but um do you think that he, the reason for the expansion will be he's just going to go ahead and feed undead now or is he going to go ahead and just mass out tier one units the entire game i think he's he just wants that to to go up to 50 that's usually the standard uh, 50 food uh, with the taiwan units and then you can either feed your ally or you can uh, you can start to tech uh, so but but the important thing right now is that both junker and uh, feta are at i think uh, level one still uh, because feta didn't get any barracks he doesn't have the ability to to kind of get out on the map and, and creep um, but in any case uh, it's my, maybe not the worst thing because uh, Nick Tamir went for a keep of the group that is pretty good at punishing, uh, you know, greedy creeping or something like that with entangle and harassment. So, um, and he's taking to tier three feather is uh, with a spirit lodge, double spirit lodge. So, <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing right now. Yeah, I'm more than a little bit confused. I mean, is it possible he's going to try for? Just mass cast as an add a Torin totem layer. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't know. I can't tell if this is just uh, Feta being a little bit unorthodox or if my 2v2 experience is so far behind, I have no idea what's going on. It's a little confusing uh, for me at the moment. No, they play weird strategies. Like on, It's typical if you fade players to try to innovate and be creative. Eh, I mean, I you think. can't fault that. Every now and then it's got to work, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least I think uh, you know um, casters and torrents are going to be pretty good against uh, tier one units. So if they hit a timing, they might be able to pull something off. So let's see. We'll go ahead and take a look here. Tommy, you're about to hit level three on his keeper of the grove. We look into him. He is now going up to tree of ages. He's got about uh, two thirds of the way there so far. And solid 46 of 50 food, but he's got that expansion going up as well, so that'll put him straight at 50. If we look at uh, Week, he is at 400, 400, and he's just at 39 of 50, but pretty good shape right now. We can see that his uh, Blade Master and Shadow Hunter are in very good position. It looks like they're actually going to be doing some harasser, harassment on Junker, so we're going to have to take a break before looking at the other heroes. Mm -hmm. This looking eerily reminiscent of what happened between Lolliet and Chehi last time we looked at their game. We see the Goblin Sapper go ahead and take down one of the Ziggurats. And interesting move that Weak is going to be focusing on taking down the Crypt. If he's able to take it down, obviously that'll be quite the coup. However, I would imagine that it's going to be somewhat unlikely that he's given enough time to take all of that down. Although, Junkers may want to try and bring out a few more Alkalites to heal. Uh, we do see he's gotten some gargoyles up as well, but now he's at 40 of 30, meaning he's food capped. Going to need to get those ziggurats up as quickly as possible, and still only level 2 on that Death Knight, which really, when you're both the Keeper and the Blade Master for your opponents are at level 3, not a good thing. Mm. Um, go ahead. The choice to go for a Keeper is, uh, you know, it, 
it's not so good to creep with the keeper because he doesn't really benefit that much from hero, hero levels like other uh, heroes do, like a demon hunter or something. Um, so it's actually good for Kveda right now that he's able to creep and that uh, Nictamere is leaving him alone. Of course, Junker is in a, in a yeah in some trouble. He's going for for Garks, which is weird, I think, uh, against the Nork. Well, he was going for Garks. I don't think he's any longer going for Garks, seeing as how the crypt is dead. <laughs> well, yeah, he's on the defensive, and uh, he, if he, yeah, if he's not careful, he might be punished as he's trying to get the uh, the creep camp with the Drake in the bottom right. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to be careful now. It does look like he's going to manage to pull that off since he is not under any direct pressure and it doesn't look like Undead is going towards him as we speak. Uh, perhaps I don't think you can creep that. I don't think you can creep that with only three Garks, can you? Uh, Maybe. I think you can. All right. That's we'll pretty see. sick. Yeah, but I mean, it's certainly going to take a while and he is really lucky that they are not hitting him as we speak. Um, but it does look like I he's going to bring it uh, down. I think they're joining up, and I think they should hit the uh, Junker right now, full force, since they don't really have anything to to defend with. Yeah, and he just grabs a scroll of Restoration, which is certainly not a bad item, but probably not the game-changing item that he was hoping to pick up there. Mm. I don't think they could have hoped for anything better, though, yeah, considering the item drops. Doesn't it drop a uh, Drake there? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I don't see it doing anything though. Um, I think a scroll is is the best item you can get there uh, in two and two games. Perhaps so. We do see that uh, undead and uh, Tamara going ahead and finishing up this last creep camp, and it looks like they're going to be ready to make a move. Mm. Uh, they have joined together, and uh, Feta's towers should protect him from being the target. Although it doesn't look like they're terribly afraid of that as we speak. And actually, they're going to go ahead and try to target down Feta. It looks like. Yeah, strange choice. I strange think. choice, but perhaps we'll give Junkers and Feta a little room to maneuver here. And actually, it looks like Tamara are going to go ahead and creep check Feta as we speak while they Undead tries to take down um, the main base. There we go. We are going to have a TP out and bad move there by the shadow hunter did not grab the tome of experience and in the end just, just looks like his little harassment to make him tp back and take out a few buildings mm -hmm. they can they defend for now i guess if if junker d decides to to tp but he doesn't have any orb so it's gonna be really hard yeah although i mean if he doesn't tp i don't see any way that they survive this so Unfortunately, regardless of circumstance, I think he's going to have to. TP's in front of the Orc. Not a great move there. Bats come in and take down at least one of the guards early on. They do have a couple of the towers in the background fighting for them. However, this is a massively outgunned army right now in terms of uh, total food size. We've got 68 mm. for Tamer, 46 for Weak, and uh, 30 for Junkers, 44 for Feta. So honestly, this is just a completely unfair fight at the moment. We do see a couple of the Torn being brought back by Casters. A little bit of an advantage there. And the, oof, Blademaster getting super low, and it does go down there. So Weak loses his Blademaster. Uh, probably not going to be enough to change the course of this fight. However, that is a swing that perhaps if anything was going to have an impact on it, it would be that. And we do see the towers are all still up. They've not been taken down yet. So continuing to do good amounts of DPS to the archers there at the edge. I have to say that uh, engagement from Nick Tamir and uh, Weak Unders was pretty dumb, uh, to be honest. I think they you should just win on, on Junker's main instead of fighting next to the towers and losing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'd agree with you in that. And they should still be okay, but they are being forced to TP away here. And some big experience gains for uh, Junkers and Feta. They did not lose any of their heroes either. The Naga went down in addition to the Blademaster. And that brings them all the way down to 36 food for Weak and 55 for Tamer. So quite the food swing there. And we also see Junkers has an expansion up and running now. Mm, yeah, and and we got to just uh, tavern revived the blade master. Ah, that was because he wanted to kill off uh, Junker's death knight, I guess. Yeah, probably worth it. And 
especially if they're able to bring down the Lich, which it does not like, look like they'll be able to do at the moment. Uh, costly buyback there, but possibly worth it, especially if they're going to try and do a quick push going on as well. Goblins up and is there, should be able to take care of it. Has to be careful not to lose the Obsidian statue, and uh, mm. up in come the Raiders, so they are going to continue to heavily push this, actually, and now it looks like they'll probably be going for the correct base. However, Hex does go off on the Blade Master. Is it possible they'll manage to get a second one? How much? Not enough man on the Lich, unfortunately, to get it off. And now it may be a turnabout here. We may see Feta lose his Blade Master. Just gets away in the nick of time. And there we go. The Blade Master getting really low. Still has that potion of vulnerability that there will be a TP out. Does manage to time it perfectly. So they escape there. Some damage done to Junkers. Um, however, I wouldn't say that was worth the buyback, in my opinion. What do you think? No, I don't think so. And oh, okay. Uh, Weak ended was actually harassing uh, Junkers' uh, expansion at the same time, so it was worth it. I think. Um, but they, they, Feta and, and Junker have the tech advantage right now. <laughs> They're both a tie three, um, so they can uh, pull something off. I think if they hit a hit soon, um, because Nick Tamir and uh, and Weak ended have. Just, you know, raiders and a bunch of archers and talons. So if uh, Jungus get some destroyers, I could actually see them do pretty well in fights. Yeah, I think the problem is Jungus is just so low on uh, gold Everything. and wood at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Or gold, not wood. Mm. He doesn't have any units, so <laughs> he's reviving his Death Knight. So yep. yeah, Feta they, looks they're like gonna he's going to go wait ahead a minute. And put up an expansion now in the top right. Yeah, and he's gonna place a lot of towers if I know Fedor right. Yeah, he uses his FFA style in two and two. The the strange thing about towers is that you know, you buy a, a tower that is like you know it's like wasted gold or, or wood because it can't move. So, um, yeah, you would rather use that for a, a unit or something else. Yeah, although, on the other hand, if your opponents are going to be nice enough to go ahead and attack into your towers, then they do pay off in that sense. <laughs> yeah. It's this Blade like, Master come, is looking come, come nasty Come to fight right at now. my towers. Yeah. yeah. Blade Master at plus 29. <laughs> yeah. That's just sick. All right, so Junkers continues to try and maintain his... Uh, Haunted gold mine here, however, he has lost the excuse me, Necropolis. And we did. Did you see... go out last night? Or I did not. I just woke up at seven o'clock to start casting this. Oh yeah, that's right. American time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit earlier on our side here. <laughs> yeah. True. So here we go. We do see what could be the last push of the game. They've not made the mistake of going directly into Feta's towers. This time they're going directly into Junkers. Feta, fortunately, is over here in the nick of time. And Shadowhunter kind of being caught in the middle of all the melee as we speak. Uh, still no orb on the Lich. Lich is only level 2 as well. And Death Knight goes down instantaneously. you got to imagine that's not good for uh, trying to win the game right now. And there we go. The Shadowhunter goes down as well. This could be GG. We see level 4, but soon to be level 5 on the uh, Blade Master for weak. And in addition, you can see just those crits going off at 261 right now. Pretty high for a level 4 Blade Master. 273 levels up as well. Level 4 on the Shadow Hunter. Junkers down to 37 of 50. And the Blade Master for Feta looks like it's going to go down as well, leaving Lich as the only remaining hero for Feta and Junkers. So while they put up a good fight, it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Uh, Almost managed to turn the tides when they fought at Feta's base. However, managing to take out Junkers' expansion and pretty much making sure that Junkers was unable to do anything throughout the game through constant harassment looks like it was going to prove just to be a tad too much for Feta and Junkers to deal with. Yeah, I think so. I think they should, it should be GG right now. Yeah, I'm surprised that they're not calling it. We do have an expansion up and running for Feta, but we also have an Ancient Protector going up that will do some damage to the peons. Um, Feta only sitting, er, he's sitting on 780, but he's not actually even reviving his heroes at the moment due to the altar being rebuilt. And Feta is going to be completely done. It looks like Feta and Junkers may be staying to fight this out until the bitter end, though. Yeah. 
I mean, they they don't have any chance anymore. I don't think. I agree. And uh, Junker's not even feeding his gold to Feta yet, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> They're probably blaming each other. <laughs> <laughs> How could you play so bad? There we go. There's the GG coming up. Oh, yeah. All right, so this match goes towards weekend tomorrow. Very well-fought uh, battle. As you mentioned, they've played numerous games together, and looks like that's showing through in the game here. But uh, why don't you give us some recap? Um, yeah. Feta choosing to go for the fast tech build uh, enabled them to, to creep and uh, harass at the same time. So Jago never got any momentum going for him. He was constantly on the back foot against uh, the Orc and couldn't go out of his main. That seems to be the trend for all the games we've casted so far with Undead. And um, Feta choosing to go for, for Towerns uh, was an interesting choice against uh, Mass, but in the end it's, it just fell apart because they didn't have any counter to, to Talons. And, and yeah, I, I think it was just a matter of time before uh, Nick Tamir and uh, Weak Under was going to, to take that win. They they could have killed off uh, Junker's main uh, 10 minutes earlier uh, and ended the game right there. But Yeah, I think that was my main takeaway was while they were definitely a well-oiled team that had played together quite a bit, they did not have perfect decision-making, and that's something that's going to come back to bite you when you're facing a team like either Star-Shaped and Rich or uh, Laliette and Focus. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe some of their decision-making improves going forward and mm. uh, if they're able to hold their own against teams like those since that is the caliber of competition they'll be facing shortly. Yeah, I think they're just used to playing against standard, uh, gay, you know, standard play because often on Warcraft 3 Arena and 2 and 2, uh, people just tend to go with the same strategies. Uh, and they didn't seem to, to know how to, to handle uh, that kind of tech play with towers uh, since they were massing, or at least Nick Tamir was, and he usually does that in, in all his games. So. All right. Well, if you're on Twitch, follow along for the next game, and if you're on YouTube, then uh, go ahead and explore some of the other games from this tournament. We'll be uh, streaming all day.